Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So, um, sorry I got a whisper. My wife is still sleeping. I woke up a bit earlier to film this video because I wanted to film three videos this week. Last week I started a fundraiser and it's going to end tomorrow. Now, I made five videos last week and I told myself if I reach my stretch target, I will make three videos this week. So, yesterday I did the video on the orchard. Today I'll make a video on Rust system. And tomorrow it'll be a video on my own system. Now, for those of you who still want to contribute, you have until tomorrow to help out with the pandemic. And I'll have the fundraiser uh, link at the bottom of this page. And uh, yeah, the money will go directly to um, Doctors Without Borders. And uh, it doesn't go through me at all. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at Russ's system. And um, he actually bought the Omegas off me. He made the video of me. And after that, he bought it off me. Now, um, just like all my other videos where I showcase somebody's system, I'm going to ask you to keep the negative comments to yourself, such as the room treatment, there's none, or the turntable is not 100% leveled, or the speaker is a bit too much to the left, please. And the reason why I go through such lengths giving this warning at the beginning of this video is because I want to start a channel where people don't have to be afraid to share their system. This is a hobby. And uh, what's important is that we have fun. All right, so let's start today's video. Hi, Thomas. A big thanks for asking me to, to go over my, my system here. Um, I've been a long time viewer of your YouTube channel and always impressed by, by what you bring us every week. And also just wanted to say thanks for, you know, giving an opportunity for some of us um, who don't have our own YouTube channels to also share our, our systems with, uh, with the greater audiophile community. Um, I guess I should also start by saying that um, Thomas and I, we live in the, in the same city, so you've actually had the, the pleasure of uh, being over here at my house and, and seeing my system, but uh, you didn't ever have a chance to, uh, to do a review video, and so during this uh, COVID period, I'm just taking the opportunity to do a little overview of, of my system. So I think I'll start with the, the turntable because the turntable, it's actually the, the oldest piece that's in the, in the system. Um, and it's actually how I got back into Hi-Fi. So this is a VPI Traveler turntable. So this has the original Soundsmith Othello cartridge on it. Um, and it's unchanged since, since the day I bought it. The only thing that I, I've upgraded on the, the turntable is, is adding the, uh, the weight here for... Um, for flattening out the vinyl discs a little bit. And sitting next to it, you can see the amp. So this is a Simply Italy from Unison Research. I've upgraded the um, the power tubes um, to the EL34s from um, Sophia Electric. These are the um, the original uh, 12 AX7s that came with, uh, with the amplifier. And um, tying those two pieces together is, of course, the phono stage. Okay, so the Phono Stage Musical Surroundings uh, Phenomena 2 Phono Preamplifier. I've been very happy with it. It's very quiet, uh, very uh, low, low noise floor, very black background. Um, so I have been um, fairly happy with that. The one thing I will say is uh, you can see I've got like the power cord routed separately from, from the interconnects. Just uh, I found that really helped to, to cut down on the, on the noise. There's a little bit of hum from the... Uh, uh, the wall wart plugging the, um, the phono stage in. Okay, and then I've got all of this set here on um, a custom built cabinet um, that I had made here locally from a, an artisan cabinet maker. Uh, we we worked together to to design the piece and to uh, um, determine the the size and the shape and the colors and the aesthetic of the of the cabinet. So super happy with that. Um, Took us a little while to, to get it finished, but uh, well worth the effort. Um, and so here I keep just some of the, um, the vinyl um, that I, I listen to on heavy rotation, some of the new stuff, some of the stuff that I like the most. Just above that, I've got the PS Audio Sprout 100. And Thomas, I think you'll recognize that. I only use this for, um, for the headphones, okay? So I've got a pair of uh, noise-canceling wireless headphones uh, from Bang and & Olufsen, and then I've also got a pair of Aeons from, from Mr. Speakers. Okay, so I, I, do, uh, I do use headphones at night uh, for late night listening, and I'm using the, the PS Audio Sprout for, uh, for powering those headphones. 
Here in the uh, in the main listening room, as you've seen, I've got uh, the Zoo Audio Dirty Weekends. These are in electric blue. Um, I picked these up new. I purchased them about a year ago when the last time that they went on sale. And I also have uh, Klipsch Heresy 3s. And I swap out between the Heresies and, and the Zoos uh, quite frequently just to... Um, just to keep it fresh and to give myself a different perspective, make sure that uh, you know I'm I'm not getting too comfortable with one thing, and just to um, tune my ears better, you know, and have a different experience from from time to time. So, common question obviously would be like, uh, which ones are are my favorite, or which ones do I like better, or the differences between the the zoos and the and the clips, and they are. They are quite different, obviously. I will say, you can see, like, my, my listening room is quite small. I have a small apartment. Now that I have both pairs, I should say I bought the Klipsch first, and then I picked up the Zoos. So the Zoos, they fit this room much better. So in my room, I don't have any, I don't have any treatment whatsoever. I, I could, of course, but... Um, being in an apartment like this, I know that no amount of, uh, of room treatment um, is really going to, to solve some of the problems that I have. I also have windows and, and everything in this room. So I'm dealing with what I have, it's not perfect. So I'm really not the type of audiophile who's looking for perfection. I'm much more of a music lover than I am a perfectionist in terms of audio quality. Not to say that I don't like audio quality, of course I do. It's uh, hopefully apparent in some of the decisions that I've made, but I really just like listening to music. Uh, I want the, the, the experience to be good, but I'm, I'm not a control freak when it comes to bass or mids or highs, but obviously there are some differences. The bass from the, the Klipsch in this room is much more pronounced. And again, that's just due to room size. The, the Klipsch I have, I've found are just a little bit too big for this room, and the zoos offer a much more pleasant listening experience. However, the the clips, um, it's not that I don't like them anymore. Um, I still use them a lot. It's just it's just the room. Now that I have multiple pairs of speakers, I I, I really have found have found my preference. I still love the clips. I'm more hanging on to them for someday when I have a slightly larger room uh, to see you know what difference they can make if they're if they have a little more breathing room. So I, I like the, the zoos a lot. Also, the other thing is the, the clips. I've actually lifted them up off of the, the floor with some stands that I have, and I, I prefer them up off of the floor. But then you really need a subwoofer for sure because the bass tightens up a lot when you lift them up off the floor and, and change their positioning. Um, and you lose some, some of that bass that you, um, at least in my room, that I have when, when they're on the floor. So another thing that I like about the zoos is uh, they're more at ear level than than the clips. Um, I feel that the clips you you sort of always feel that they're 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 low down in the floor, um, whereas the uh, the zoos give you that more traditional um, level with ear listening experience. Um, both speakers pair um, very very well with uh, with this little um, single ended amplifier that I have. So this amp is only putting out um, about, with these tubes, it's putting out about eight watts per channel, um, which is more than enough to, to drive both sets of speakers. That's a little bit of um, the current setup that I have here in, in my, my listening room. So for, uh, for this amplifier and the, the larger speakers, it's, um, it's purely analog. I'm only listening to, to vinyl here in, in this system. That's the main listening system. I'm gonna walk you guys in here to the dining room and I'll show you uh, the, the dining room system. So this is the, um, the dining room setup that I have. So I've got the uh, Lieben um, CS300XS uh, integrated amplifier um, along with the Omega RS8 um, bookshelf um, speakers and again Thomas you will probably recognize those and powering um, or the source for this is um, 
is a blue sound node 2i that I just have, you know, tucked back um, on a little shelf I built behind uh, the buffet. Having three sets of, of speakers um, gives me a lot of flexibility. Um, I like to be able to take the Omegas into the to the main room and bring the zoos in here or or, or vice versa. Um, I haven't had the clips in here. I have had the the Lieben. I have taken that into the, the main listening room and hooked that up to to both the zoos and the, the Klipsch. And I will say, because this is a class AB amplifier, whereas the other amplifier I have is just a class A amplifier, um, there's a lot more bass response from, from the Lieben, which really helps with these Omegas. Um, because they're, they're smaller cabinets, um, they're, they're not on the floor, and I don't have a subwoofer in here, the, uh, the ability to, to use the, the bass boost on the on the Lieben really really wakes up uh, the Omegas and gives you a slight sense of you know like there's subwoofer being in the room it's not the same obviously um, but it does really help round out the sound more so that's a um, that's a little bit the system I'll give you guys a peek inside the uh, the, the Lieben so here this has um, EL84 power tubes um, and the same um, 12 um, AX7 smaller um, rectifier tubes in the um, in the stage. Okay. Also have um, some custom made uh, speaker cables for the Omegas that a friend of mine uh, here locally made. Um, very high quality. I've been very happy with those. Um, price point was much better than you know buying something from um, a commercial company. And that's another point that I would make about the. The choices that that I've made, um, I've tried to stick. I would say, with the exception of, of the Klipsch, I've tried to stick with smaller, more boutique manufacturers instead of going, you know, for the the larger uh, players in the market. Um, Omega is just a very small company, ran out of the Northeast in the U.S. Lieben is very, very small quantity, made in Japan. Uh, simply Italy the same. It's a very small company, only making small quantities every year. Um, Zoo the same. Uh, we all know Sean Casey and those guys. It's a very uh, small company doing doing really nice work. So I, I really like supporting the small guys, and I also think that it's uh, um, in my systems. I'm really looking for quality over quantity, and that's another thing that that I really believe in is I know a lot of people are really into separates and I've been there myself in the past um, but now I, I'm, I'm really into integrated amplifiers and getting as much out of the the signal path as possible. Um, I know there's some trade-offs to that but for me there's really something to be said for uh, simplicity in a setup. Prevents a lot of you know like trying to figure out what's the best match and what's the weakest link in the chain. And I, I prefer having, uh, like I said, few, fewer things in the signal path. It just makes a lot of decisions easier. You can focus more on, on a few things to really dial in the sound that you like. And I've, I've also obviously gone the, the high efficiency speaker, you know, low wattage route. I think the, the Lieben is only putting out like 12 watts per channel or something like that. Don't quote me. I don't have all the specs of my stuff well memorized. I'm, I'm not big into uh, numbers and details like that. Like I said, I'm more of a just an avid uh, music fan, and I just like good, good quality music um, in the house all day, every day. So that's a little bit my uh, my systems. I hope you guys enjoy it. I look forward to. Uh, uh, seeing the video on Thomas's channel. Thanks again for that. And I will also uh, take any questions in the in the comment box. We can talk about you know the decisions more. I can try and answer anyone's questions um, should they have them. So thanks so much for the opportunity, Thomas. Uh, look forward to the to the day that we can see each other again. Bye.